In this video we shall prove that the Book of Mormon character, known as Abinadi, was most likely based on the famous Abelian Miguel Servito, who in English is known as Michael Servatus. Miguel Servato. Michael Servatus. Nicholas de La Fontaine asserts that he has instituted proceedings against Michael Servetus and on this account he has allowed himself to be held prisoner in criminal process. One in the first place, that about 24 years ago the defendant commenced to annoy the churches of Germany with his errors and heresies, and was condemned and took to flight in order to escape the punishment prepared for him. Two item, that on or about this time he printed a wretched book, which has infected many people. Three item, that since that time he has not ceased by all means in his power to scatter his poison, as much by his construction of biblical text, as by certain annotations which he has made upon Ptolemy. Four item, that since that time he has printed in secrecy another book containing endless blasphemies. Five item, that while detained in prison in the city of Vienna, when he saw that they were willing to pardon him on condition of his he found means to escape from prison. Six said Nicholas demands that said Servetus be examined on all these points. Seven and since he is able to evade the question by pretending that his blasphemies and heresies are not else than through doctrine, said Nicholas proposes certain articles on which he demands said heretic be examined. Eight to wit, whether he has not written and falsely taught and published that to believe in a single essence of God, there are three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, is to create four phantoms, which cannot and ought not to be imagined. Nine item, that to put such distinctions into the essence of God is to cause God to be divided into three parts, and that this is a three-headed devil, like the Cerberus, whom the ancient poets have called the dog of hell, a monster, and things equally injurious. Ten item, whether he has not maintained such blasphemies most injuriously, as much as against the ancient doctors, such as St. Ambrose, St. Augustine, Chrysostom, Athenius, and the like as against all those who sought in our times to elevate Christianity, even calling to Melton a man without faith, son of the devil, Belial, and Satan. Eleven item, whether he does not say that our Lord Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, except in so much as he was conceived of the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Twelve item, that those who believe Jesus Christ to have been the Word of God the Father, and gendered through all eternity, have a scheme of redemption which is fanciful and of the nature of sorcery. Thirteen item, that Jesus Christ is God, in so much as God has caused him to be such. Fourteen item, that the flesh of Jesus Christ came from heaven and from the substance of God. Fifteen item, that divinity was imparted to Jesus Christ only when he was made man, and afterwards spiritually communicated to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Sixteen item, that when it is said that Jesus Christ is of the same essence as his Father, it is the same as saying that in this man Jesus Christ there is the same Trinity, power and will as God, and not that the Word of God dwells and subsists in his essence. Seventeen item, whether he does not condemn those who seek in the essence of God his Holy Spirit, saying that all those who believe in the Trinity are atheists. Eighteen item, that those who believe in any distinction of property in the essence of God dissipate his nature and reduce it to fragments. Nineteen item, that the Word of God is no other thing than the flesh of Jesus Christ. Twenty item, that the flesh of Jesus Christ was engendered out of the substance of God by word which he calls seminal. Twenty one, that the essence of the flesh and of the soul of Jesus Christ is the divinity of this word and of the breath which God has breathed forth. Twenty two item, that if Jesus Christ were the Son of God otherwise than on account of his humanity, because that is engendered out of the substance of God, then he would not be really dead. For if he is dead, he is no longer the Son of God. Twenty three item, that when St. John says that the word was in God, it is the same as saying that the man Jesus Christ was there. Twenty four item, that the essence of angels and our souls is of the substance of God. Twenty five item, that the substance of Jesus Christ is that which was in the skies, and that this is the same substance whence proceed the angels and our souls. Twenty six item, instead of conferring three persons in the essence of God, or three hypostases which have each his property, he says that God is a single entity, containing one hundred thousand essences, so that he is a portion of us, and that we are a portion of his spirit. Twenty seven item, in consequence whereof not alone the models of all creatures are in God, but also the material forms, so that our souls are of the substantial seed of the word of God. Twenty eight item, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, because he has the elements of the substance of the Father, to wit, fire, air, and water. Twenty nine item, that the soul of man is mortal, and that the only thing which is immortal is an elementary breath, which is the substance that Jesus Christ now possesses in heaven, and which is also the elementary and divine and incorruptible substance of the Holy Ghost. Thirty item, that the fathers under the law have never received the spirit of regeneration. Thirty one item, that by the sin of Adam, the soul of man as well as the body was made mortal. Thirty two item, that little children are sinless, and moreover are incapable of redemption until they come of age. Thirty three item, that they do not commit mortal sin up to the age of twenty. Thirty four item, that the baptism of little children is an invention of the devil, an infernal falsehood tending to the destruction of all Christianity. Thirty five item, that the word of God is no longer that which it was before the incarnation of Jesus Christ, because its substance was the clearness of the skies and is now made flesh. Thirty six item, that however much he confesses that the philosophers have heard him saying that the word was God himself, he says that Jesus Christ, in so much as he is a man, was always in God and that from him is the divinity of the world. Thirty seven item, that the air is the spirit of God and that God is called spirit, because he breathes life in all things by his spirit of air. Thirty eight item, the soul of man in so much as it possesses many divine properties is full of an infinity of gods. Thirty nine item, that in the person of Mr. Calvin, minister of the word of God in the church of Geneva, he has defamed with printed book the doctrine which he preached, uttering all the injurious and blasphemous things which it is possible to invent. Forty and because he knows well that his said book could not be tolerated even among papists, in so much as it destroyed all the foundations of Christianity, therefore he hid himself at the house of William Guyer Wu, at that time proof corrector, as said Guyer Wu has testified. Said Nicholas demands that the said Servetus should be compelled to respond as to the fact of the articles here presented, without entering into dispute as to whether the doctrine is true or not, because that will appear later on. Process of the 14th of August, 1553, before the Lesser Council of Geneva. Calvin, Opera, Volume 13, pages 727 to 731, French. It was published while he was at Strasbourg in 1531. Its title was De Trinitatis Erebus Libri Septum, Per Michaelum Servitum, Alias Reeves, Abergonia Hispanum, a no 1531, I, E, seven books concerning the errors of the Trinity, by Michael Servetus, Alias Reeves, a Spaniard of Oregon. It consists of 119 leaves in Atheo. The following account of the opinions, which Servetus maintained in this work, is wholly borrowed from La Roche, who had a printed copy of it in his possession. Servetus in the first place undertook to show that the words Jesus, and Christ, and Son of God, denote only a man, and endeavor to prove it by various passages of Scripture. He explained many other passages agreeably to his system, and answered the objections of the Orthodox. This part of his work may be easily understood, but when he comes to his own notions concerning the person of our Savior, he is obscure and unintelligible. He says, for instance, that Christ was performed in the divine mind, he was a certain mode of existence.
which God constituted in himself, that he might make himself visible to us, i.e. by describing the effigies of Jesus Christ in himself. He calls this the face of God, and the word that was made flesh. He denied that Trinity, continues Larash, as modern Unitarians do, but he had a very different opinion from theirs concerning Jesus Christ, as appears from this passage. On this opinion he insisted in his last writings. He used several expressions in this book, at which the Orthodox were very much offended, for he called the three divine persons, a mere imagination, a chimera, metaphysical gods, etc. Let us place ourselves for a moment in the situation of Servetus. It was but a few weeks past that he had been at Vienna, enjoying honor and affluence. While there, Calvin had been active in plotting against his life, and to effect his purpose, had used means the most dishonorable, with which it appears that Servetus was acquainted. Calvin, however, was not able to accomplish all that he intended. He had only caused him to be driven from his home, deprived him of his friends and of his means of subsistence, and obliged him to wander as a fugitive. Abinadi, Mosiah, 11, 20, etc., equals Zab, father, or Abbey, my father, plus Nodi, my wandering. 2. It is known that Servetus wanted above all things to oppose the doctrine of the Trinity. He impugns it in plain terms in his first book, but it must be owned that he attacks rather the language of the schoolman than the article itself, such as is taught in the scripture. I make an exception, however, of the explication he has given of 1 John 5, 7, and Matthew 28, 19, that which he says at first, upon these two passages, may give a general view of his system, which appears to me to be essentially the same with Sibelianism. More evidence that Servetus was Sibelian is given from his rejection of the Trinity and the fact that Servetus' tenets are said to be different from the Moerian views of Socinus. Mr. de la Roche therefore had reason to say that since Servetus rejected the doctrine of the Trinity, he ought not to have substituted an opinion so obscure and so little intelligible in its place. Grotius owns that he had not read the writings of Servetus exactly enough to know all his tenets, but he plainly acknowledges, however, that his sentiments were different from those of Socinus and his followers. 6. What I have marked in italic in the last section naturally leads me to examine if Servetus has adopted the system of the Topan Pole. I. E. Spinoza's system, he was accused of it, and his answers gave a great deal of reason to fix it upon him. We may also see more clearly that he believed that God is the universe, and that the universe is God. By joining some passages of his book, he says, I shall not rehearse all the invectives of Servetus against those who admit the doctrine of the Trinity. They so far surpass what we can conceive, that neither the rudeness of that age, nor the persuasion of its representing God in a wrong light, can make any apology for language so odious, and so outrageous against the doctrine held in veneration by almost all the Christian church. Neither is he more reserved when he talks of the Pope, and the Church of Rome, and supposing there had been no heresy in his whole book, what he says upon this subject was sufficient to have condemned him to the flames by the Roman Catholics in the time when he lived. According to Servetus, the Pope is Antichrist, the beast to whom the dragon has given his power, Rome is Babylon, the ancient seat of Satan, where the beast continues in the same idolatrous practices as before, the practices of the Mohammedans are preferable to those of Rome. In a word, the whole second book of the treatise to Regeneration A contain the most violent invectives against the Roman Church and against its worship, and on this occasion, against the Trinity, which he looked upon as a contrivance of the Popes. I might produce very extensive passages to justify what I have said, I shall confine myself only to some few, whereby a judgment may be formed of the rest. Equals as when the three-headed he cat it was worshipped even so now, in three gods, a three-headed Cerberus with three broken spirits in one is worshipped. Of the gods, the Aegenitans worship most Hikat A, in whose honor every year they celebrate mystic rites which, they say, Orpheus the Thracian established among them. Within the enclosure is a temple, its wooden image is the work of Myron, and it has one face and one body. It was Alchemans, in my opinion, who first made three images of Hikat A attached to one another, a figure called by the Athenians Epiportia on the tower, it stands beside the temple of the wingless victory. A twelfth labor imposed on Hercules was to bring Cerberus from Hades. Now the Cerberus had three heads of dogs, the tail of a dragon, and on his back the heads of all sorts of snakes. 33 I turn to Heracles. We must not suppose that he attained such power in those days as a result of his physical strength. Rather, he was a man of intellect, an initiate in heavenly wisdom, who, as it were, shed light on philosophy, which had been hidden in deep darkness. The most authoritative of the Stoics agree with this account. As regards those labors which find no place in the Homeric tradition, there is surely no need for me to display my ingenuity in a lengthy but irrelevant disquisition. The bore which he overcame is the common incontinence of men. The lion is the indiscriminate rush towards improper goals. In the same way, by fettering irrational passions, he gave rise to the belief that he had fettered the violent bull. He banished cowardice also from the world, in the shape of the hind or Nia. There was another labor, too, not properly so called, in which he cleared out the mass of dung, in other words, the foulness that disfigures humanity. The birds he scattered are the windy hopes that feed our lives, the many-headed hydra that he burned, as it were, with the fires of exhortation, his pleasure, which begins to grow again as soon as it is cut out. On the other hand, the three-headed Cerberus, whom he brought into the lights of day, is probably meant to suggest the three branches of philosophy, logic, physics, and ethics, as they are called, which grow as it were out of a single neck, and divide into three at the head. Meisnerus, a Lutheran divine, in a book integuled, Philosophia Sabria, part, 1. Question 4. Says, that none amongst them could so much as contend that Servetus did not deserve death, not only for heresy, but likewise for raising a sedition. 181 Servetus did not raise any sedition, which the good Meisnerus wishes above all things, or for a notorious blasphemy, such as that of Servetus calling the Trinity a Cerberus with three heads. 8. We shall draw up under this last head, some opinions of this man become so famous, upon other detached points, that perhaps are but little known. Is any one, fond to know in a few words, how he formed his notions of the Trinity? For he owned it. We shall see that his system, as to this, is founded on Sibelianism, as was observed in the beginning, Onda, says he. The 17th, La Fontaine and Caledon produced two letters from Ecolampadius, and two passages from Melanchthon, to prove that Servetus had been condemned in Germany. They recurred likewise, to the passage concerning Judea, which was found in his Ptolemy. We have spoken of this article in the note F. They all edged likewise, his notes upon the 9th, 8th, and 53 the chapters of Isaiah, his Christianism restitutio, and the Latin letter he had written to Abel Pepin, minister at Geneva. He compared anew the 21st of August, and there was shown him a letter from his bookseller, Balthazar Arnoulet, written from Vienna, the 14th of July, 1553, to James Burtet, living at Chaltilon. 
one, by which he begged of him to destroy secretly the copies of Christianism Restitutio which he had sent him, because that Gorauld had deceived him by concealing the errors which were in this book. The same day Calvin disputed with Servetus upon the true sense of the words person and hypostasis. After Calvin and the other ministers were retired, the judges ordered that the books which Servetus required, if to be found in Geneva, or Lyons, should be bought at his expense, and that he should keep by him some of these Calvin had produced, and the judges granted him ink and paper, according to his desire. The 22d, Servetus presented a request to the syndics and council of Geneva, wherein he required nothing but what was just s, but which he did not obtain. Abinadi, in the 14th chapter of Mosiah, likewise quotes all of Isaiah 53, Mosiah 14, 1, yea, even doth not Isaiah say, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Mosiah 4, 12, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Mosiah 15, 1, and now Abinadi saith unto them, I would that he should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men, and shall redeem his people. The names of several other persons occur about this time, who are reputed to have held anti-Trinitarian sentiments, but the limits prescribed to this sketch forbid the enumeration of them here, with the exception of Michael Servetus, a man who holds a preeminent rank in this class, and whose celebrity, arising both from his splendid talents and his tragical fate, entitles him to particular notice. This distinguished person was born in 1509, at Villeneuve in where his father exercised the profession of public notary. After having passed with extraordinary success through the customary routine of juvenile instruction, he was sent to the University of Daulaus to study the canon law. During the three years he passed in this celebrated seat of learning, he devoted a large portion of his time to the critical perusal of the scriptures, an employment to which he was probably excited by the spread of the Reformation and which eventually led to his renunciation of the prevailing opinion concerning the Trinity. Apprehending that in France he could not with safety pursue his theological inquiries or give publicity to his own convictions, he removed, in 1530, to Basel in Switzerland, where he obtained the esteem and friendship of the most eminent of the Reformed clergy in that city. Having given these divines credit for more enlarged views and a more liberal spirit than they had imbibed, he made no scruple of avowing to them the opinions he had been led to embrace. But he soon discovered that they were as little disposed as the Catholics to extend toleration to any who pursued their speculations further than themselves. His friend Nicolampadius having taken occasion in some letters which he addressed to him, to upbraid him in no very gentle terms with the heresy of his sentiments. Finding himself thus under unpleasant restraint, where he had looked for freedom, he quitted Basel in 1530 or 1531, and went to Strasbourg. In the latter year, and shortly after his arrival in this city, he published his first work on the Trinity under the following title, De Trinitatis Ero Ribus, Libri Septum, Her Michaelum Ceruetto, Alias Royus, Ab Aragonia Hispanum. It was printed at Hague now in Algis, by John Sacker for Conrad Rouse, a bookseller of Strasbourg, to whom Servetus had given his manuscript at Basel. The appearance of this book produced a very powerful sensation among the leaders of the Reformation, who embraced every opportunity to hold it up to public execration as much, apparently, from the dread of being charged by their Catholic adversaries with holding the opinions of the author, as from their real abhorrence of the tenets advocated. Bucer, who resided at Strasbourg, is stated to have declared publicly to his congregation that the writer deserved to have his intestines torn from his body. Servetus, not deeming himself secure at Strasbourg while this storm raged, returned in the same year to Basel, but finding Colampadius most highly incensed against him for his recent publication, he took his departure for Lyons. On his way, he passed through Hague now, where, in 1532, he published, with his name as before, his second work, Intejuled, Dialogorum de Trinidad, Libri Duo, to Joschia Regni Christi, Capitula Quatur. It is affirmed that, in order to obtain permission to quit Basel unmolested, he bad promised to publish his recantation. This promise he artfully contrived to fulfill in words, in the preface to the latter work, in the first sentence of which he states that he retracted all that he had written in his seven books against the received doctrine of the Trinity. Not, however, he proceeds to intimate, because what he had written was false, but because it was imperfect. On his settlement at Lyons, Servetus, in order to escape persecution, took the name of Villanova News from his birthplace. After a residence of three years in this city, he went to Paris, where he applied himself to the study of medicine with so much success that he soon obtained his degree of doctor, and was admitted one of the public lecturers at the university. From Paris he returned to Lyons. Here he was occupied in superintending the press of the Drexili, celebrated printers of that place, for whom he edited an edition of Ptolemy's Geography, which was published in 1535, and again in 1542 and also an edition of Pony News's Bible in Hebrew, with an interline Latin translation, which appeared in 1542. In 1541 he removed his residence to Vienna and Dauphine, where he practiced as a physician, and enjoyed the friendship and patronage of the Archbishop of the province, to whom he dedicated the second edition of Ptolemy's Geography. After his settlement at Vienna, Servetus entered into a correspondence with Calvin, then residing at Geneva. In the letters which passed on this occasion, both the learned combatants displayed considerable warmth and acrimony of spirit in the defense of their respective theological systems, and the freedom with which Servetus arranged the tenets of the reformer laid the foundation of that implacable resentment to which he ultimately owed his ruin, for Calvin scrupled not to avow that he would be satisfied with no atonement for this attack upon his creed short of the death of his adversary should the disposal of his life be ever in his power. While things were in this state, Servetus committed to the press his last and most celebrated work, entitled Christianism Restitutio, or Christianity Restored. It was printed in 1553 at Vienna, by Balthazar Arnold, but neither the place nor the printer's name appears in the title page, nor was the author's name attached to this publication. The letters M. S. V., standing for Michael Servetus Villanova News, are however placed at the end. Calvin was in possession of the secret that Servetus was the writer of this obnoxious book, a copy of it having been forwarded to him by the author. By means of a young man named William Trahi, a native of Lyons, then residing at Geneva in consequence of having embraced the Reformed religion, he procured some sheets of it to be conveyed to France, and put into the hands of the Inquisitor at Lyons, with an intimation that the author was in his neighborhood. He afterwards sent several of the letters which, in the course of a confidential correspondence, he had received from Servetus, in order to furnish additional evidence to convict him of heresy and blasphemy. On the ground of these documents, Servetus was arrested at Vienna, and committed to prison, whence, however, he soon effected his escape. After his flight, he was tried 
tried, convicted, and sentenced to the stake. His books were committed to the flames, and himself burned an effigy. Cervantes escaped early in the month of June 1553. His intention was to proceed to Naples. And with this view, after wandering, note, Abinadi, Mosiah, 1120, etc., equals Ab, father, or Abbey, my father, plus Novi, my wandering, for some time, he went to Geneva, where he was recognized in the month of August, and at the instigation of Calvin committed to prison. Various attempts have been made by the apologists of the reformer to remove from him the foul stigma of being the author of his adversary's arrest, but, in truth, Calvin himself never denied or disguised the fact. On the contrary, he expressly avows it in more than one of his printed works, and takes credit to himself for having thus acted towards a man whose principles he held in abhorrence, and whom, on more than one occasion, he thought fit to brand with the appropriate epithet of dog. Sir Vettis, on being taken into custody, was deprived of the property he had about him, which was a considerable amount, and thrown, like a common malefactor, into a damp, squalid, and noisome dungeon. Proceedings were immediately instituted against him for his alleged blasphemies. The accusations were preferred by Nicholas de La Fontaine, a person residing in Calvin's house, either in a menial situation, or for the benefit of his instruction, but the real prosecutor, as was manifested in the course of the trial, was the reformer himself. Sir Vettis repelled the whole of the charges with great firmness, and openly avowed himself the author of the writings that were stated to contain the heretical opinions for which he was arraigned. His trial proved exceedingly tedious and vexatious, and lasted from the 14th of August to the 26th of October, when, a majority of his judges having decided against him, he was condemned to be burned to death by a slow fire. If Sir Vettis cannot be commended for the temper with which he sometimes replied to his accuser, it is impossible to view without feelings of disgust, mingled with deep concern, the manner in which Calvin acted during the whole of these iniquitous proceedings, and particularly to observe the savage tone of exultation with which, immediately after his conviction, he stated to a friend the effects produced upon his victim by the communication of his sentence. But lest idle scoundrels should glory in the insane obstinacy of the man, as in a martyrdom, there appeared in his death a beastly stupidity, whence it might be concluded, that on the subject of religion he never was in earnest. When the sentence of death had been passed upon him he stood fixed now as one astounded, now lies sighed deeply, and now he howled like a maniac, and at length he just gained strength enough to bellow out after the Spanish manner, misericordia. Misericordia. The truth, however, is, that Sir Vettis bore his fate at this trying season with great firmness and serenity, disturbed indeed, occasionally, by the view of the terrific apparatus which was preparing for his execution. He never wavered in his religious faith. When exhorted on the last morning by Farel, the minister of New Chatel, and the friend of Calvin, who was appointed to attend him, to return to the doctrine of the Trinity, he calmly requested his monitor to convince him by one plain passage of Scripture that Christ was called the Son of God before his birth of Mary. The day following that whereon sentence had been passed upon him, he was led to the stake, praying, O God, save my soul. O thou son of the eternal God, have mercy on me. In order to aggravate his sufferings, he was surrounded by green faggots, which, after half an hour of excruciating tortures, completed the work of death. In the same fire was burnt, attached to his body, his last book, Christianisme Restitutio. Thus Herr Servetus at the age of 44, in a Protestant state, for exercising that right of private judgment in the formation of his religious opinions, which his persecutors had themselves acted upon in dissenting from the Church of Rome. Alma 44 20, and it came to pass that Moroni caused that the work of death should cease again among the people. And it came to pass that he took the weapons of war from the Lamanists, and after they had entered into a covenant with him of peace, they were suffered to depart into the wilderness. Calvin, in his work the Dell, Expose. Serve the Urarum, thus avows the part he acted in this transaction. All the proceedings of our Senate are ascribed to me, and indeed I do not dissemble that he, Serve was thrown into prison through my interference and advice. As it was necessary according to the laws of the state that he should be charged with some crime, I admit that I was thus far the author of the transaction. Writing to Saltura, he observes, when at last he was driven here by his evil destiny, one of the syndics, at my instigation, ordered him to be committed to prison, for I do not dissemble that I deemed it my duty to restrain as much as lay in my power a man who was worse than obstinate and ungovernable, lest the infection should spread more widely. Notice some pre-1816 accounts that mention, O oh God, save my soul, and the faggots, it must be owned, after such a spectacle, that when the Picard, John Calvin, burned the Spaniards Michael Servetus upon a pile of green faggots, it was only like a puppet show after a play. Taken from Voltaire, Francois-Marie Arouet, the 21st of November 1694 to the 30th of May 1778, the Gospel of the Day, Volume 10, 1773. Notice faggots in French as faggots in English. December 28th, 1807, when he was conducted out of the city to the place of execution, called Chample, he often exclaimed, O oh God, save my soul. O Jesus, Son of the Eternal God, have pity upon me. He was burned by a slow fire, with green bushes full of leaves, and expired at the age of about 44, after half an hour's sufferings. He remained unshaken in his faith, which induced Calvin to bewail that so many Italians honored and revered the memory of Servetus as that of a martyr. Candidus. The following is a pre-1816 passage in which, like the Rakhalian Catechism, contains both phrases, Farrell, the colleague of Calvin, then came to accompany Servetus to the stake. He harassed the sufferer without success to induce him to make a confession, contrary to the opinions which he had maintained. Servetus was conducted out of the city to the place of execution, called Chample, and Farrell remained at his side. On his way, he often exclaimed, O oh God! Save my soul. O Jesus, Son of the Eternal God, have mercy upon me. When arrived at the places of execution, he fell prostrate on the earth, and prayed fervently. Pharaoh, meanwhile, if the thing be credible, thus addressed the multitude. You see what strength Satan has, when he possesses any one. This man is very learned, and perhaps he thought he was doing right, but now he is possessed with the devil, which may equally happen to any one of you. When he rose up, Pharaoh renewed his persecutions to induce him to make an orthodox confession. Sir Vettis answered nothing, but uttered the exclamation, O oh God! O oh God! Pharaoh asked him if he had nothing to say but that. He then answered, Of what can I speak but of God? Sir Vettis was then bound to the stake, with an iron chain, and a strong cord passed several times round his neck. His book was fastened to his thigh. He interrogated the executioner not to torment him long. The fire was applied, and Sir Vettis, worn out with disease and suffering, is said to have uttered a cry so terrible as to apple the spectators. The pile was scanty, of green oak branches, with the leaves still upon them, intermixed with smaller kindlings. He lingered a long time in torment, crying out with a piercing voice, Jesus, Son of the Eternal God, have mercy upon me. At last some of the spectators, out of compassion, threw faggots upon him to put an end to his misery. It was half an hour before he was dead. It was not pretended, by the enemies of Servetus, that his faith was shaken by his sufferings, or that he was ever so overcome as to say anything contrary to his belief. He died, says Calvin, without giving any sign of having come to a better mind. The enmity of Calvin did not cease with the death of Servetus. In the treatise, that I have often quoted, which he wrote against him, 
He endeavored, by every art in his power, to blacken and defame his memory. It is in this treatise that we find the following most remarkable passage. But, says Calvin, that idle blockheads may not glory in the mad obstinacy of the man, as if he were a martyr. In his death there appeared a brutish stupidity, from which one may easily conclude that there never was anything serious in his religion. From the time his sentence of death was announced to him, he would now remain like one stupefied. Now he uttered deep sighs, and now he howled like a madman, which at last rose to such a degree that he could only bellow out in the Spanish fashion, mercy. Mercy. There are those, to use the words of a friend, there are those, who may think, that though Calvin has written eight folios of commentaries on the Bible, a system of divinity, a treatise on the punishing of heretics, and remarks on Seneca upon mercy, with all his learning, and all his zeal, the single sentence, which can never be blotted out, fixes on another than Servetus the character of brutish stupidity and insincerity in his religion. Thus perished, in the forty-fourth year of his age, the famous and unfortunate Michael Servetus. He has appeared from this account to have been a man, whose zeal outran his prudence, and who could not be insult without indignation. For this there are many who will blame him, and in this there are many who will imitate him. This was his fault or his vice, the only one which is urged against him, with the shadow of pretense. While for his piety, God knows how sincere he was. His works and his conversation were those of a pious man. His unblemished character is testified by his standing in society, his respectability in his profession, by the eloquent silence of his enemies. His learning is marked in his writings. He was skilled in Spanish and French, probably in Italian and German, in Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, and to him must belong the credit of the first intimation of the circulation of the blood, the greatest discovery in modern physiology, and who will deny his undaunted courage, his perseverance and heroic constancy, who has followed him through his trial and imprisonment to the stake. Clearly much of Thomas Reed's account was taken from this life of Michael Servetus. Notice the use of the phrase, threw faggots upon him to put an end to his misery, compared to that of the Book of Mormon, scourged his skin with faggots, yea, even unto death. Mosiah 11, 26 through 12, 1. Now it came to pass that when Abinadi had spoken these words unto them, they were wroth with him, and sought to take away his life, but the Lord delivered him out of their hands. Now when King Noah had heard of the words which Abinadi had spake unto the people, he was also wroth, and he saith, Who is Abinadi, that I and my people should be judge of him? Or who is the Lord, that shall bring upon my people such great affliction? I command you to bring Abinadi hither, that I may slay him. For he hath said these things, that he might stir up my people to anger, one with another, and to raise contentions among my people, therefore, I will slay him. Now the eyes of the people were blinded, therefore, they hardened their hearts against the words of Abinadi, and they sought from that time forward to take him. And King Noah hardened his heart against the word of the Lord, and he did not repent his evil doings. And it came to pass that after the space of two years, that Abinadi came among them in disguise, that they knew him not, and began again to prophesy among them, saying, Thus hath the Lord commanded me, saying, Abinadi, go and prophesy unto this my people, for they have hardened their hearts against my words. They have repented not of their evil doings, therefore, I will visit them in my anger, yea, in my fierce anger will I visit them in their iniquities and abominations. Abinadi, like Sir Vettis and Sidney Ridland, is Sablian, Mosiah 15 1 through 5 1. And now Abinadi said unto them, I would that he should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men, and shall redeem his people. And because he dwelleth in flesh, he shall be called the Son of God, and having subjected the flesh to the will of the Father, being the Father and the Son, the Father, because he was conceived by the power of God, and the Son, because of the flesh, thus becoming the Father and Son, and they are one God, yea, the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth. And thus the flesh becoming subject to the Spirit, or the Son to the Father, being one God, suffereth temptation, and yieldeth not to the temptation, but suffereth himself to be mocked, and scourged, and passed out, and disowned by his people. Mosiah 16, 15 through 17 teach them that redemption cometh through Christ the Lord, which is the very eternal Father. Amen. And now it came to pass that when Abinadi had finished these sayings that the king commanded that the priest should take him and cause that he should be put to death. Mosiah 17 And now it came to pass that when Abinadi had finished these sayings that the king commanded that the priest should take him and cause that he should be put to death. But there was one among them, whose name was Alma, he also being a descendant of Nephi. And he was a young man, and he believed the words which Abinadi had spoken, for he knew concerning the iniquity which Abinadi had testified against them. Therefore he began to plead with the king that he would not be angry with Abinadi, but suffer that he might depart in peace. But the king was more wroth, and caused that Alma should be cast out from among them, and sent his servants after him, that they might slay him. But he fled from before them, and hid himself, that they found him not. And he, being concealed for many days, did write all the words which Abinadi had spoken. And it came to pass that the king caused that his guards should surround Abinadi, and take him, and they bound him and cast him into prison. And after three days, having counseled with his priests, he caused that he should again be brought before him. And he said unto him, Abinadi, we have found an accusation against thee, and thou art worthy of death. For thou hast said that God himself should come down among the children of men, and now for this cause thou shalt be put to death, unless thou wilt recall all the words which thou hast spoken evil concerning me and my people. Now Abinadi saith unto him, I say unto you, I will not recall the words which I have spoken unto you concerning this people, for they are true, and that ye may know of their surety, I have suffered myself that I have fallen into your hands. Yea, and I will suffer even until death, and I will not recall my words, and they shall stand as a testimony against you. And if he slay me, he will shed innocent blood, and this shall also stand as a testimony against you at the last day. And now King Noah was about to release him, for he feared his word, for he feared the judgment of God would come upon him. But the priests lifted up their voices against him, and began to accuse him, saying, He hath reviled the king. Therefore the king was stirred up in anger against him, and he delivered him up, that he might be slain. And it came to pass that they took him, and bound him, and scourged his skin with faggots, yea, even unto death. And now when the flames began to scorch him, he cried unto them, saying, Behold, even as ye have done unto me, so shall it come to pass that thy seed shall cause that many shall suffer the pains that I do suffer, even the pains of death, by fire, and this because they believe in the salvation of the Lord their God. And it will come to pass that they shall be afflicted with all manner of diseases, because of your iniquities. Yea, and ye shall be smitten on every hand, and shall be driven and scattered to and fro, even as a wild flock is driven by wild and ferocious beasts. And in that day ye shall be hunted, and ye shall be taken by the hand of your enemies, and then ye shall suffer, as I suffer, the pains of death, by fire. Thus God executeth vengeance upon those that destroy his people. O God, receive my soul. And now when Abinadi had said these words, he fell, having suffered death by fire, yea, having been put to death, because he would not deny the commandments of God, having sealed the truth of his words by his death. Acts 7, 59, KJV 59, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Servetus, brought before judges, burned, 
because of Sablianism, with faggots, saying, Oh God, save my soul. Abinadi, brought before judges, burned, because of Sablianism, with faggots, saying, Oh God, receive my soul. Both were burned after they had fled, or wandered, concealed their identities, commented on Isaiah 53, and were thrown into prison. Alexander Campbell, and therefore probably many of the disciples, knew about Servetus. After some time, however, the dawning of the day of Reformation warned the savage tribes, who had so long rioted in slaughter, to retire, and Satan now found himself obliged to adapt his counterfeits to the increasing knowledge which the world gained of primitive Christianity. But as men at this period were still deeply imbued with superstition and intolerance, these traits he was at first unable to retain among the characteristics of the Reformed churches. There was still some toleration for intolerance when the Presbyterian leader burned Servetus at the stake, and when under the reign of James I, many suffered death for their religious opinions beneath the auspices of the English reformers. But after all, I feel assured that this friend to truth examined the whole translation in order to find something to impeach my reputation and that he fixed upon this as the only and the most likely foundation on which he could rest his lever in order to hurl me down in the estimation of those whose conviction upon another subject he feared. And yet he has ten times more reason to impeach John Calvin and Theodore Beza on account of Sicilianism than me, excepting that I have not given my voice in favor of burning any Servetus. For both these gentlemen argue that the famous passage which a hundred orthodox divines and critics have condemned as spurious, viz. 1 John v. 7, does not prove the unity of three persons in one God, admitting it to be genuine, editor. For my own part, I conceive it to be as reasonable to blame a man for being black, or for not being seven feet high, as to blame him for not being a Christian. It is no way strange that those who embrace the whole system of John Calvin should persecute even unto death, as he himself set them so striking an example, in persecuting servants even unto death. Mosiah 17, 13, and it came to pass that they took him, and bound him, and scourged his skin with faggots, yea, even unto death. Now, adding this evidence found in Alexander Campbell, Sidney Ritten's mentor, we have Servetus, brought before judges, burned, because of Sablianism, with faggots, even unto death, saying, O oh God, save my soul. Abinadi, brought before judges, burned, because of Sablianism, with faggots, even unto death, saying, O oh God, receive my soul. Both were burned after they had fled, or wandered, concealed their identities, commented on Isaiah 53, and were thrown into prison. Is this Mr. Rigdon, Sidney Rigdon? Asterisk since the debate at Mount Pleasant, I was invited to attend to a debate at Mount Vernon, state of Ohio. The invitation came to me two days before the day appointed for the debate, with a space of 160 miles between. Mr. Scott and Cunningham, Presbyterian ministers, gave the challenge to a Mr. Rigdon of those parts. I have never heard the result of their debate, but would humbly inform Messrs. Scott and Cunningham, that if they think they have done anything clever, they may have an opportunity of doing it again with their humble servant, at a proper time and place. Considering Sidney Rigdon lived in Mentor, Ohio at this time, and given the small population thereof, it is very likely 